Robin Williams. I only recently discovered how great of a man he was and how great of an actor he was through his movie Good Will Hunting with Matt Damon. That was a beautiful movie. I I loved that movie so much. Editing it was fun. Watching it was fun. Like posting it and sharing it with you guys was so much fun. And in the comment section, this was the movie that was highly recommended after I saw Good Will Hunting. And uh, here I am today watching Dead Poets Society. I don't know anything about the movie, but from the pictures I've seen, it seems like it's in a college environment. Probably he's a teacher. I don't know, but let's check this out. All right pizza robin williams such a great man such a great actor i loved his character in um goodwill hunting so much and i can't help but just feel like that was also part of his you know just his innate energy as a person as a man coming out through that film as well so let's check out this video before we get in there please hit that like button consider subscribing if you like reactions like this do all the youtube things to help the youtube algorithm push this video out to more people i appreciate that a lot if if you do like the full version of these movies i have them on patreon so you can check that out speaking about patreons thank you to all my patrons for supporting me without you there'll be way less of me rambling in this video so thank you so much everyone on youtube shout out to you guys clicking the video i hope you enjoyed the video and if you do hit that like button do that for your boy but before we get into this movie let's pay some bills the sponsor of today's video is me as some of you might have guessed by now, I am an artist. I create oil paintings. You can see it in my studio. I change them off often. A way you can support me and the channel is by purchasing some of my work. Now, these are not the original paintings, but I doubt you could tell the difference. These are museum quality canvas prints. These are prints that are sturdy and professionally made, ready to hang once you get them. There's a variety of portraits and wildlife options you can pick from. If you use the promo code FRANKART, you can get 20% off any of these professional prints. The link to my shop is in the description. So if you feel like spicing up your walls, hanging some art and supporting a local artist, go down to my website and get yourself a piece of art. Once again, the promo code is FRANKART, F-R-A-N-K-A-R-T for 20% off on the checkout. Thank you to me for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's watch Dead Poet Society. Don't know what to expect, but it's Robin Williams, man. Well, hello. Is this out of school or? 41 boys sat in this room. What are the four pillars? Four pillars. Tradition, honor, discipline, excellence. Mm. This is why we are the best preparatory school in the United States. Hmm. I went to a boarding school, so I feel this a little bit. You will have the opportunity later to meet his replacement, Mr. John Keating. Himself an honors graduate of this school, and who for the past <laughs> several years has been teaching at the highly regarded Chester School. Interesting. So he's the new teacher. Let's see what role he plays in the boys' lives. This is our youngest, Tom. You have some big shoes to fill, young man. Your brother was one of our finest. No pressure or anything. God damn. <laughs> Let the boy live. Neil, you expect great things from you this year? Thank you, sir. Well, he won't disappoint us. Right, Neil? I'll do my best, sir. Hey, I heard you got the new kid. Looks like a stiff. <laughs> Oops. Your face looks like a stiff. So don't mind Cameron. Poor him with his foot in his mouth. You know what I mean? Are they allowed to smoke in there? It's open. Father, Definitely not. I thought you'd gone. You're taking too many extracurricular activities this semester, and I've decided that you should drop school annual. But I'm the assistant editor this year. Yikes. Sorry, Neil. Father, I can't. It wouldn't be fair. Fellas, would you excuse us for a moment? Yikes. Uh oh. Don't you ever dispute me in public, you understand? Father, I wasn't disputing After you. After you finished medical school and you're on your own, then you can do as you damn well please. But until then, you do as I tell you. Is that clear? That's crazy. Bank. What about what he wants, though? Why doesn't he let you do what you want? Right. Yeah, I can see how the pressures from their parents can play a role in the pressure they face. <laughs> I don't know. Like wanting to dictate their futures instead of what they want. I think that's something we can all like, we can all sympathize with. First 20 questions at the end of chapter one are due tomorrow. 
Yikes. Anyone failing to turn in any homework assignment will be penalized one point off their final grade. Let me urge you now not to test me on this point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the kind of teacher he's gonna be. Because everyone else seems very strict and by the book. Comes in whistling. <laughs> That's already different. Can he just on. leave? They're having class outside? Interesting. I used to like teachers that did things differently as well. A break from the norm. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Poem by Walt Whitman about Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Now, in this class, you can either call me Mr. Keating, slightly more daring. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> I, too, attended Helton. Survived. And no, that time I was not the mental giant you see before you. I was the intellectual <laughs> equivalent of a 98 pound weakling. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. The Latin term for that sentiment is carpe diem. Who knows what that means? Carpe diem. Cease the day. Very good, Mr. Meeks. Meeks. Another unusual name. <laughs> Cease the day. Why does the writer use these lines? Because he's in a hurry. No. Ding. Thank you for playing anyway. <laughs> Each and every one of us in this room is one day going to stop breathing, run cold, and die. Yikes. Peruse some of the faces from the past. You've walked past them many times. I don't think you've really looked at them. I think he's going to be their favorite teacher. They believe they're destined for great things. Like many of you, their eyes are full of hope. Did they wait until it was too late to make from their lives even one iota of what they were capable? These boys are now fertilizing daffodils. They're gone. So close. You can hear them whisper their legacy to you. <laughs> Seize the day. I love this though. Perspective he's given them. Seize the day. That was weird. But different. Spooky if you ask me. Coming to the study group tonight? Uh, I've got some history I want to do. Suit yourself. He is very quiet. I wonder if he'll open up. Practice this rating method. As your ability to evaluate poems in this manner grows, so will your enjoyment and understanding of poetry. That's so interesting, the way they break it down like that. Excrement. What? That's what I think of Mr. J. Evans Pritchard. Playing pipe. We're talking about poetry. How can you describe poetry like American Bandstand? Well, I like Byron, I give him a 42, but I can't dance to it. I was just gonna say, it was kind of like thinking of it as if it's math or something. <laughs> he said excrement. That is shite. Rip out the entire page. What a teacher. Rip it out. Come on. Rip it out. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Rip, spread the tear, rip it out. The Bible, you're not gonna go to hell for this. <laughs> You're not gonna go to hell for this. Clean tear. I want nothing left of it. Rip it out, rip. Even the ones that are hesitant, <laughs> he used a ruler. <laughs> I wonder if the school are gonna like. What the hell is going on here? Yep, I was just gonna say that. Don't hear enough rip. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were here. I am. Uh, hmm. Excuse me. I was gonna say I don't think the rest of the school are gonna like. His own orthodox methods. You will learn to savor words and language. And what anybody mm. tells you, words and ideas can change the world. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. Mm. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race, filled with passion. As a bar. But poetry, beauty, romance, love. Mm. These are what we stay alive for. Essentials. Of cities filled with the foolish, good amid these, oh me, oh life. Answer, that you are here, that life exists, and identity. Identity. Powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. Mm. I'm loving this. I'm loving this idea that I'm getting from the movie so far that obviously started with them showing us examples of how 
the parents have so much pressure on their kids, like not just the parents, but the school. They mentioned how a percentage of them made it to Ivy League um, uh, colleges and whatnot. And you can tell that some of the kids, that's not what they want for themselves, you know, but there's just that parental pressure on them to do it. And him coming in and being so different from their norm, I am starting to like love the role he's going to play in their lives, like making them see that other things like their interests their loves their hobbies are just as important as their noble pursuits and of course freaking robin williams being the one teaching them that like it, <laughs> it makes so much sense the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse mm. what will your verse be oh your verse be Quite an interesting class you gave today, Mr. Keating. Misguided though I was. I think so. A realist. Show me the hearts unfettered by foolish dreams. I'll show you a happy man. But only in their dreams can men be truly free. It was always thus, always thus will be. Tennyson? You don't want this smoke. Keating. You don't want this smoke with him. <laughs> You're gonna lose that every time. <laughs> I love that we're going to see some different Sir? philosophies clash. Oh, Captain, my Captain? Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we were just looking in your old annual. No, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> God. What was the Dead Poets Society? Title card. I doubt the present administration would look too favorably upon that. Why? Interesting. What was it? Is it a group he was in? Gentlemen, can you keep a secret? Uh-oh. Dead poets were dedicated to sucking the marrow out of life. Yikes. That invoked the beginning of every meeting. See, we would gather at the old Indian cave and take turns reading from the biggies. Even some of our own verses. Is it a book and club? In the enchantment of the moment, we'd let poetry work its magic. And we were romantics. We didn't just mm. read poetry. We let it drip from our tongues like honey. Spirits soared, women swooned, and gods were created, gentlemen. Not a bad way to spend an evening, eh? It's really not. Thank you, Mr. Perry, for this stroll down Amnesia Lane. Burn that, especially my picture. <laughs> <laughs> Are they gonna start up the society again? Dead poet society. Everybody in? <laughs> Where's this cave? He's talking. It's beyond the stream. I know where it is. It sounds boring to me. Don't go. <laughs> this Tell me sounds the boring. We're talking, Dalton. So don't come, please. Oh come on, Neil Hager's there. Get Hager. No. <laughs> I like him because he don't I like mean. getting into trouble. Even when they were ripping their sheets, know, he Neil. did his with what? a ruler. Pit. Why the fuck? Are they in robes? I'm hoping his hoodies are not robes because they got full on robes on. <laughs> They're really getting into the culty aesthetic. I know I definitely did a lot more legal stuff in boarding school, so who am I to judge <laughs> what these boys are getting at? I would be scared as hell though, I'll give you that. You know if they get caught, they're getting expelled, like straight up. For a school that is this strict, not a chance. Oh wow, they're making a fire out there. Oh wow, it's an actual cave. I hereby reconvene the Dead Poets Society. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. I'll second that. <laughs> to put to rout all that was not life, and not when I had come to die, discover that I had not lived. Mm. Then I had religion, then I had a vision. I could not turn from their revel in derision. Then I saw the Congo creeping through the black. Then I saw the Congo Eeks. creeping through the black. He's coming through the black. I guess they have the essence of the society, right? Like sneaking away and enjoying poetry. You better keep it down. Oh, it's gonna be bad when they get caught. I don't know why this is giving me Harry Potter vibes. Like they're in Hogwarts. You can also imagine maybe John Wayne is Macbeth. Gray. Well, is this a dagger I see before me? What a good actor. Dogs, sir? Oh, not just now. <laughs> I do enjoy a good dog once in a while, sir. I like the joy and the focus he's bringing um, into these boys' lives. Because, I mean, without his class and without meeting him, they wouldn't have known about the society and all that extra extracurricular joy it's, um, it's bringing them. I mean, you can tell that they look forward to his classes just because he's not... 
It's not like there are no more professors. Start with your K-9 crudite. Why do I stand up here? I stand <laughs> up on my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. See, the world looks very different from up here. Mm. You know, come see for yourselves. Come on. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way, even though it may seem silly or wrong. Now, when you read, don't just consider what the author thinks. Consider what you think. Mm. Boys, you must strive to find your own voice. I love the, the way he way teaches begin, them. The less likely you are to find it at all. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Break out. I just thought of a comparison to this movie, the way he's teaching them to look different via poetry. If you haven't seen the movie Fight Club, please skip to the next part of the reaction. But just listening to this, it made me think about Fight Club and how, what's his face? Uh, Brad Pitt's character was trying to teach them to get over the norm and be better, but his way was, you know, highly harmful and... Obviously, that movie is like um, that movie is a cautionary tale of how wanting to change your life can be dangerous in a way when who you're looking up to is, you know, dangerous, but also charismatic and, you know, misogynistic in a lot of way. And a lot of young men aspire towards that. But this is like a different way where like it's more positive, is more um optimistic is through a like beautiful form of art which is poetry but in that movie it's like very different is through violence and breaking away from the norm and like self-harm and stuff like that yes both will take you out of your sense of normalcy and help you learn yourself better and explore more about life but one is very dangerous and you know self-sabotage but another is more peaceful more insightful more introspective um so i just thought about that comparison real quick i would like you to compose a poem of your own an original work oh. mr anderson don't think that i don't know that this assignment scares the hell out of you you mole <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited to see how their teacher will help him break loose what is that to play, Tommy. What does it have to do with you? All right, they're putting it on at Henley Hall. Open tryouts. Yes. So. so. His dad is not gonna like that, is he? Ah! Yes! Yes! I'm gonna be an actor. I even tried to go to summer stock auditions last year, but of course my father wouldn't let me. Yep, father time, wouldn't I, let him. I know what I want to do. I'm gonna do it! Whether my father wants me to or not, Carpe Diem! <laughs> Carpe Diem. How are you gonna be in a play if your father won't like? Why don't you just call him and ask him, and, and maybe he'll say yes. That's a laugh. Oh, that would definitely be a no. Definitely. If I don't ask him, at least I won't be disobeying him. Yeah, but if he said no Jesus, before, Todd, whose side are you on? Right. I, mean, I haven't even gotten a part yet. Can I even enjoy the idea for a little while? That's sad. At least pretend with me for a little while. I'm going to speak about this a lot because I feel down on a personal level. As some of you know, I'm an artist. I studied art in college and now I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an artist and I also teach classes at the museum and I'm essentially living my dream. Um, but sometimes, you know, I wonder if my parents were a little more strict and they had pushed me to study something I didn't want to study. Like what if they had pushed me to study medicine or they have pushed me to study accounting or something like that, that I had zero passion for. You know, I'm always thankful to my mom because she was like, you know, as long as you're in school, as long as you're staying out of trouble and all this, like, you know, do what you want to do. And I'm so glad that she gave me that freedom, you know, so... Sometimes I take it for granted or can't even imagine what it feels like because I talk to my friends, some friends and so many other people that they're like, I'm studying computer science and I don't give a damn about this at all. And it's like my parents making me do this. And, you know, seeing a kid like this that he just said for the first time he knows what he wants to do with his life and he's so enthused about it. But just this idea of like approaching his father with it is like so crushing because he knows it's never going to happen. And, you know, you feel for him. I definitely feel for him. Nothing Mr. Keating has to say means shit to you, does it, Todd? Mm. 
But being in means you gotta do something, not just say you're in. Listen, mm. Neil, I, I appreciate this concern, but I'm, I'm not like you. The, the point is that there's nothing you can do about it, so you can just butt out. I see his POV, no. though. <laughs> I mean, no. Give me Neil. Neil, give me that back. <laughs> give me, Neil, give me. Don't be immature. Come on. I need. I like that his friends, I think his friends and his teacher are gonna help him break out from that strict by the rules lifestyle. Cause sometimes you gotta live a little, you gotta find your passions, you know? That's a beautiful scene. Being a menace to the birds, but beautiful scene. Is he supposed to be here? Kinda looks like he escaped school to grounds on a bike. Lover boy. Okay, everybody on the bus. <laughs> Heartbreak. <laughs> Heartbreak times two. For me, sport is actually a chance for us to have other human beings push us to excel. Time to inherit the earth. Mr. Pitts, rise above your name. <laughs> rise above your name. You know what to do, Pitts! Oh, to struggle against great odds, to meet enemies undaunted. Sounds to me like you're daunted. Say it again like you're undaunted. <laughs> oh, to struggle against great odds. Sounds to me like you're daunted. <laughs> what a teacher. What a teacher. Now go on. Yes. Next. <laughs> to be a sailor of the world, bound for all ports. They're like, this is not sports. Come on, Nick. Listen to the music. To dance. Clap hands, exalt, shout, skip, roll on, float, on. Yes! <laughs> Do indeed be a god! Let's go! Surely, I got the part! He did! Wow, he got the part. Congrats. Oh, he's gonna get heartbroken. Writing to you on behalf of Perry. Oh, he's faking? This is great. Oh, I thought he was writing to his dad to ask for permission. Nah, he's faking. You got some balls, kid. Oh yeah, dad is not gonna like that. The cat sat on the mat. <laughs> I don't mind that your poem had a simple theme. Sometimes the most beautiful poetry can be about simple things, like a cat. Poetry can come from anything with the stuff of revelation in it. Just don't let your poems be. Wow, now, even when they're trying to next? pull a joke, like he teaches a lesson. Mr. Anderson, sitting there in agony. Come on, Todd, step up. Let's put you out of your misery. I, I didn't do it. I didn't write a poem. Mr. Anderson, hmm. that everything inside of him is worthless and embarrassing. Isn't that right, Todd? And that's your worst fear. Nothing yeah. wrong. I think you have something inside of you that is worth a great deal. I would like you to give us a demonstration of a barbaric yawp. <laughs> Let it oh, out. You can't yawp sitting down. Let's go. Come on, up. Yo, come on, louder. Yo, oh, that's a mouse. Come on, louder. <laughs> that's Yo, a oh, mouse. Oh, yeah, like yeah. That. There it is. What does he remind you of? Don't think. Answer. Go on. A, a, a madman. What kind of madman? Crazy madman. No, oh, you can do better than that. Free up your mind. Use your imagination. A sweaty tooth madman. Good God, boy. There's a poet in you after all. <laughs> Describe what you see. And this image floats beside me. The sweaty tooth madman. The sweaty tooth madman. Now give him action. Make him do something. His hands reach out and choke me. That's wonderful. wonderful. The truth, like, like a blanket that always leaves your feet cold. <laughs> forget them, forget them. Stay with the blanket. Tell me about forget that Forget them. You, 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 you stretch it, it'll never be enough. You kick at it, beat it, it'll never cover any of us. From the moment we enter crying to, to the moment we leave dying, it'll just cover your face as you wail and cry and scream. And that's a freestyle right there. That was so good. Don't you forget this. Don't you forget this. And that's what you love about great teachers, professors, and mentors. Is like they just have these different ways and systems to like make you bring the best out of yourself. Like make you push beyond your limits, you know, by giving you assistance, not necessarily helping you or doing it for you. I love that, like... I mean, if you go back and listen to his whole poem right there with the, you know, big tooth sweaty man, you know, he said something profound there, especially in the uh, bottom half of it. You know, there's something there. And I love that he told him, don't you forget that. Like, remember what that feels like. I love it. 
and you know it's gonna make him open up himself more. <laughs> we already know school would be significantly more boring without him in it. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't have Chris, I'm gonna kill myself. Noxious, you gotta <laughs> Boy, down. relax. No, Charlie. <laughs> it's not that deep. It's just my problem. I've been calm all my life. I do something about that. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna call her. <laughs> this is gonna end well. Well, sure. Okay, great. I I'll be there, Chris. <laughs> Friday night, the Danbury's. Thank you. I'll see you. Bye. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Gonna call me. What a romantic. She is going to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> that scarf flip. I love how he always takes them outside. Cameron, you can see him thinking, is this right? It might be right, it might be right. I know that maybe not, I don't know. He There's knows them so well. Driven by a deeper force. And we all have a great need for acceptance. You must trust that your beliefs are unique, your own, even though others may think them odd or unpopular, even though the herd may go, that's bad. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to perform, <laughs> make it for yourself. You'll be joining us. Exercising the right not to walk. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Just illustrated the point. Interesting. All these hating ass teachers looking at him, not necessarily liking his methods. Today's my birthday. Happy birthday. What'd you get? And it gave me the same thing as last year. That sucks. That sucks. Maybe they thought you needed another one. <laughs> Maybe they weren't thinking about anything at all. Probably. I didn't even like it the first time. <laughs> if I were ever going to buy a desk set twice, I would probably <laughs> buy this one. It's rather aerodynamic, isn't it? Ha! <laughs> That's Soren. Huh? Yeah, that will make him feel first good. Unmanned flying desks. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! I, I bet that felt good. You'll get another one next. <laughs> yeah, you get another one next. So yeah. You gotta love life. friends like that, man. <laughs> oh, this is the party. Or you're gonna be majorly heartbroken tonight. Oh god. That alcohol is not gonna help matters at all, is it? My boy's on Lonely Island. Excuse yourself. Mm -mm. Walk away. Walk away. This is not what he meant by carpet din. Dude. Walk away, boy. Yikes. That ain't right. Check. Check. It's what Sanders' brother. Huh? Knox, what? What are you doing? Chet, don't. Chet, I, I know this looks bad. No, you're right. Yikes. Get the hell away from him! Ted, you heard him! Good! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Don't you guys miss having girls around here? Yeah. That's part of what this club is about. I published an article in the school paper in the name of the dead poets. What? Hmm. Demanding girls be admitted to wealth. You did. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen, son. How did you do that? I'm one of the proofers. I slipped the article in. They're gonna right. come to you and ask to know what the Dead Poet Society is. Charlie, you had no right to do something like that. If all we do is come together and read a bunch of poems to each other. But you still shouldn't have done it, Charlie. This could right. be trouble. You don't speak for the club. Uh-oh. Big trouble. Golly, the whole faculty is here. They do not look happy. Fain an unauthorized article. Mm. I'm asking any and all students who know anything about this article to make themselves known here and now. This is your only chance to avoid expulsion from this school. 
Yep, they don't play expulsion. Hello? Welton Academy. Hello? Yes, he wow. is. Just a moment. It's for you. It's God. He says we should have girls at Welton. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they're gonna get rid of him. But you're the first to try to get thrown out of this school. Think again. Others have had similar notions and have failed just as surely as you will fail. So mm. position. What position? Oh, he's getting a whooping? Count loud, Mr. Dalton. One. That is crazy. Four. Old man, you gonna break your arm. What the hell? What is this dick poet society? I want names. Yeah, he's not gonna rat them out, is he? Took one for the team. I'm to turn everybody in, apologize to school, and all will be forgiven. What are you gonna do? Charlie. Damn it, Neil. The name is Nwanda. <laughs> Nwanda. But I don't think I have to warn you, boys. His age are very impressionable. I always thought the idea of education was to learn to think for yourself. Have these boys age not on your life? Yeah, Tradition, John. Discipline. Prepare them for college and the rest will take care of itself. Right. What is discipline without nurture? <laughs> What about carpe diem and sucking all the marrow out of life? Sucking all that. the marrow out of life doesn't mean choking on the bone. Mm. See, there's a time for daring and there's a time for caution. And a wise man understands which is called for. You being expelled from school is not daring to me. It's stupid because you'll miss some golden opportunities. Yeah, like what? Opportunity to attend my classes. <laughs> yeah. Aye, aye, Captain. Keep your head about you. <laughs> and collect that would have been daring <laughs> <laughs> that's good I mean even the way he cautions them is so like loving and tender I mean there's a lot of good lessons in gentle parenting here and being like a good role model father uh oh before you say anything please let me dare talk back to me dad chill absurd acting business but you deliberately deceived me I thought I'd surprise you. I've gotten all Tell these in every class. Wasn't to find out. You made a liar out of me, Neil. Man, relax. What about him? Now, tomorrow, did you tell them that you're quitting? No, I can't. I have the main part. The performance is tomorrow night. I don't care if the world comes to an end tomorrow night. You are through with that play. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That was messed up. I made a great many sacrifices to get you here, Neil. And you will not let me down. No, sir. And then your kids grow up and you wonder why your kids don't like you anymore. And you wonder why there's a distance between you and your kids. Because you were trying to live through them and not letting them live for themselves. And now they grow up and they can't wait to throw you into a retirement home. Because they can't stand your ass. <laughs> I don't mean any offense, obviously, but um, he has no idea how he's crushing this kid. No idea. He's gonna go to the play. F it all. No, oh, he's coming for advice. Talk to my father. He's making me quit the play at Henley Hall. Acting is everything to me. Planning the rest of my life for me, and I, he's never asked me what I want. Have you ever told your father what you just told me? Your passion for acting, you ever showed him that? I can't. Why not? Because he won't allow it. I can't talk to him this way. And you're acting for him, too. You're playing mm. the part of the dutiful son. I know this sounds impossible, but you have to talk to him. You have to show him who you are, what your heart is. Well, just tell me to put it out of my mind for my own good. You Pressure. An indentured servant. Who you prove it to him by your conviction and your passion. You show him that. He still doesn't believe you. But then you'll be out of school and you can do anything you want. Mm. What about the play that shows tomorrow night? And you have to talk to him before tomorrow night. Is there an easier way? No. It's never easy. <laughs> I'm trapped. And that's the moment a young child will tell you, I wish you were my dad. You know? And I love that he understands at least where his dad is coming from, that they're not rich. Because, like, it happens a lot where, like, a lot of parents, like, they have invested so much into your life as their child. They made so many sacrifices for you, so they want you to um, grow up and do something that can almost be like an insurance for them, selfishly or unselfishly sometimes. But it's like, 
they invested in you so that one day you can grow up and take care of them, you know? So obviously I understand uh, that standpoint. And my mom, you know, I talked earlier about my parents just being free and like letting me study art and painting in college. I love that. Like I was fortunate enough that earlier on my mom, she used to tell us not in a toxic way, but she would tell us that, you know, Frank, like there's no house that I'm expecting you to build for me that I haven't built for myself. There's no car I'm expecting you to buy for me one day that I haven't bought for myself. So just go and do you. So in a lot of ways, like there was that pressure taken off my shoulders, you know, to just like live my life and make the best out of it. So I understand how some parents can invest so much in you and they want everything you do to have a positive result. And a lot of time it's mostly like financial, like financial results, like not emotional, <laughs> you know, like you being happy is like, nah, make some good money. We're all going to be good and happy. So it's rough. That's why he say he feel his, his trapped. I feel, you know, you know, he can't talk to his dad, but he can also go to the play. But something's got to give. He took a flower to her school. This man don't even care that she has a boyfriend. She's like, boy, you're going to get your ass beat again. I don't care. I love you, Chris. Fox, you're crazy. I can't. Just forget it. By the way, boys, uh, don't do that. That is very forward. Maybe uncomfortable for her as well. So, Oh, wow. In class. The heavens made a girl named Chris. With hair and skin of gold. To touch her would be paradise. Mm. She's so embarrassed. <laughs> How'd it go? Did you read it to her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what'd she say? Nothing. Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but I did it. Did you talk to your father? Uh, he, he didn't like it one bit. But at least he's letting me stay in the play. You won't be able to make wow. it. He's in Chicago. You told him what you told me? Yeah. Really? That's incredible. <laughs> Thanks. I did not expect that at all. Excuse me. Are they going to a party or something? <laughs> you know, now I know why people uh, were requesting me to watch this movie after uh, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, it's just the same vibe of like uh, young troubled boys or young clueless boys, um, you know, needing a mentor and someone helping them to grow up or like see life differently, which I mean, essentially was all of Good Will Hunting. So yeah, I, I see why this was highly recommended after that. Oh wow, she came to Chris. see him? Go ahead guys, I'll catch up. Yeah, oh. I wish you can't be in here. It's fine for you to come barging into my school and make a complete fool out of me. Mm. I mean to make a fool out of you. Well, you did. Can't, Chris. I love you. You say that over and over. You don't. You don't even know me. Facts. Go ahead, Captain. I'll walk. I could care less about you. Hmm. Then you wouldn't be here warning me about Chet. <laughs> then come with me. Knox, you are so infuriating. Come on, Chris. Just give me one <laughs> chance. You come with me tonight, and then if you don't want to see me again, I swear I'll bow out. I guess I shouldn't be overcritical about this, because, I mean, these are freaking teenagers finding their way through love and chivalry. Chivalry? And just, like, how to show affection. Um, so, yeah, take it for what it is. It's just, it's just young people. You are so infuriating. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you have a whole boyfriend. <laughs> Boundaries, yo. They're both funny. Wow, look at him. Think your shape will make him quite. Called Robin Goodfellow. Thou speaks the right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. And bean fed horse. Beguile. <laughs> <laughs> Likeness of a filly fold. Turn lips, say, and on the withered do let me pour the ale. The wine is good. He's really good. He is Sometimes really good. Three foot stool and waxing in their mirth and, <laughs> <laughs> and swear. My 
Oh, is he looking for his dad? Wow. He's gonna feel so nervous, huh? Look at him go. What the fuck is that on the floor? <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's weird as fuck. <laughs> Boy can't take his eyes off her, huh? Dude, relax. She got a man. <laughs> God. Is he doing a solo? If we shadows have offended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did. Mm. This weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. Mm. As I am an honest puck, if we have... We will make amends. Or He's killing it. Else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends. And Robin shall restore amends. Come on, kid. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Dad, come on, clap a little bit, man. I bet that feels so liberating. And I love this because his dad got to see it. Did he lie about his dad giving permission? Uh oh. I think he lied about his dad giving him permission. Yeah, that man is not happy. But Pops, you saw how good he was. You left even me speechless. You have to stay in the car. Cheating, you stay away from my son. Mr. Perry, come on. Don't make it any worse than it is. Yeah, kind of like how he suspected. He was lying about his dad giving him permission. But you killed it, though. You killed it. Yeah. Mm. But, Dad, you saw how good of a job he did. Oh, she knows it's going to be a rough night. <laughs> She's taking a swig. <laughs> she knows it's about to be a rough night. To understand why it is that you insist on defying us. Tomorrow I'm withdrawing you from Welton and enrolling you in Brayton Military School. You're going to Harvard and you're going to be a doctor. But that's ten more years. Father, that's a lifetime. Oh, stop it. Make it sound like a prison term. You have opportunities that I never even dreamt of, and I am not going to let you waste them. I've got them. to tell you what I feel. I've been so worried. What? Right. Tell me what you feel. Yeah, tell him. What is it? Tell him. Tell him, boy. Tell him. I know it's hard, but tell him. It's acting business. Because you can forget that. Nothing. Wow. Yeah, it's easier said than done. It was good. It was really good. Mm. Mom understands, but Go and get some sleep. there's nothing she can do about it. Not in this type of family dynamic. I doubt she even has a say. I hope she tries, though. And I think it's very universal. That's how a lot of parents throw in their kids. Military school. Seen it before. Yeah, you're going to get sent to military school. Puts the fear of God into you. Oh boy, don't do anything crazy, please. Do not do anything crazy, please. Better close that window, son. No freaking way. Is this really happening? Well, y'all already know what I was thinking. I was thinking he was trying to, you know, get off that window. What's he trying to do? I mean, this ominous music is not helping at all. Kid, what the fuck are you doing? Um, it's so 
Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Neil? No, this movie is not that dark, is it? Neil? Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Fuck. Oh, fuck. You base. Ugh. What is it? He was dead. Mm. I mean, you took away what that boy cared about the most. And I wish he took his teacher's advice and talked to his dad first, but dang. That is so freaking sad. Oh, his dad is gonna hate himself forever. His dad is going to hate himself forever. So beautiful. Yeah. Todd. It's okay, Todd. It's okay, Todd. It's all right. Shh. You were you wouldn't have done it. You can't explain no. it, Todd. It was his father. No. Explain it, Todd. Man. Todd. Leave him be. No! That's sad, man. I had no idea this movie would go to this lens. Do not take the passions of the youth away. Let them make their mistakes, let them explore, let them learn. Make a guardrail for them, not a freaking brick wall. Dang. He knew something was off. It's like, how are they gonna get past this? God. Mm. That's his desk. I wonder if he's gonna blame himself or feel some sense of guilt. Mm. Definitely heartbroken too. Mm. He's crying. R.I.P. Neil. The death of Neil Perry is a tragedy. At the request of Neil's family, I intend to conduct a thorough inquiry into this matter. Complete cooperation is expected. The fuck? How do they even deal with this, man? You told Nolan everything about the club is what I'm talking about. Teacher asks you a question, you tell the truth, or you're expelled. Damn. He's a rat! Exactly what I did in cooperate. Oh, wow, he and talked. Not after us. We're the victims. Well, Mr. Keating, of course, the captain himself. Mr. Keating wow. responsible for Neil? Is that what How you're saying? Well, who else do you think, dumbass? Mr. Keating put us up to all this crap, didn't he? No, he did if not. If it wasn't for Mr. Keating, Neil would be cozied up in his room right now. He didn't put mm -hmm. us up to anything. Let Keating fry. I mean, why ruin our lives? Thank you. I understand where the kid is coming from, but goddamn, it's like... You just signed your expulsion papers, Nuwanda. They know everything anyway. You can't save Keating, but you can save yourselves. Ah, uh, he's a freaking teenager. What can I say? He's always been cautious. He's always been the one most reluctant to partake in all they've been doing. So it makes sense that he's the one. I'm not going to vilify him or anything, but... He's a kid. It makes sense that, yeah, it makes sense that he would do that. Like I said, I'm not vilifying him, but I mean, to blame Mr. Keaton is just stupid. It's like, yes, they need a scapegoat. And I mean, all the teachers feel a certain way about him and his teaching methods and they need someone to blame. But the father, deep down, the father knows that he had a big role in that. Isn't that fucked up? It's like you wanted to force your kids to be a certain way and now you don't even have a kid. And everybody, I'm sure everybody are going to feel guilty about it. His mother, definitely. Because I know she wished she would have said more. 
Yeah, such a difficult situation to talk about sometimes when people, you know, end it by themselves, you know, because you never want to blame the victim because like people are going through a lot, you know, you never know what people are really going through inside. But, you know, sometimes you just want to question them, like, why? Like, what could we have done different, you know? It's so sad. And being so young and so impressionable, too, is like... But to blame Mr. Keaton, I feel like he has the least fault if we're even passing out faults to people. He has the least fault because he he did press that Neil should tell his dad about it. Talk to your dad about it. Like, do not pretend to your dad. But I'm sure Mr. Keaton wish he, you know, double tapped. He wish he was more persistent on asking him to tell his father the truth. This was rough. I had no idea this movie was going to get this, you know, deep and chaotic towards the end. Because now you're not just dealing with that. You're also dealing with Neil's death. And wow, that is very messed up. And at this point, I know some of them feel like they don't have a choice. The truth is already out there anyways. Oh, his parents. Hello, darling. He's not going to get expelled, is he? Because his parents have connection. <laughs> That's Dancing. funny. It describes hmm. how your teacher, Mr. Keating, encouraged you boys to organize this club and to use it as a source of inspiration. Reckless and self-indulgent behavior. Man, shut your old describes ass up. That is some bullshit. Keating, both in and out of the classroom, encouraged Neil Perry to follow this obsession with acting. When he knew all along it was against the explicit orders of Neil's parents. And this is why this is making my balls itch. I fucking hate this because, oh God, it's like a kid died. And you guys are going to use that as an opportunity to like fucking spin the narrative against Neil. That is so fucking stupid. I hate it. Because even when he was giving the sermon at the church about how Neil was a great student, I was just cautiously waiting for him to like spin the narrative on there and be like, he didn't do it explicitly, but it was happening in the background. It was Mr. Keating's blatant abuse of his position as teacher that led directly to Neil Perry's death. Shut up. No, tell them the truth. Basically putting words in their mouth. Hmm. If you have nothing to add or amend, sign it. Something happened to Mr. Keating? I've had enough. Sign the paper, Todd. That's fucking pressure right there. No. Coercion? Oh, that is making me so mad. Oh, he's already packed his bags. <laughs> See your new new English teacher? I will be teaching this class through exams. Who will tell me where you are in the picture textbook? <laughs> they never read it, did they? What about the realist? I believe we skipped most of that, sir. All right, then we'll start over. <laughs> they do ah. not want to be there. I came for my personal. Get them now, Mr. Keating. Gentlemen, turn to page 21 of the introduction. Read aloud the excellent essay by Dr. Pritchard. Oh, they ripped it that out. Page has been ripped out, sir. <laughs> so far, somebody else's book. They're all ripped out, sir. <laughs> what do you mean they're all ripped out? <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> sir, we. Read. Ew. To fully understand poetry, we must first be fluent with its meter, rhyme, and figures of speech. Then ask two mm. questions. One, how artfully has the objective of the poem been rendered? And two, how important is that objective? If the poem's score for perfection is plotted on the horizontal of a graph... Mr. The Keating, they made everybody Why, sign Anderson. it. <laughs> you gotta believe me, it's true. I do believe you, Tom. Leave, Mr. Keating. But it wasn't his fault. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. One more outburst from you or anyone else, and you're out of this school. Leave, Mr. Keating. I said leave, Mr. Man, shut up. They go to sleep at night feeling like they did something right. Captain, my captain. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Sit down. Since Do not conform. Morning, Anderson. <laughs> you hear me? Well, captain, my Do captain. not conform. Man, shut your old ass up, man. No offense to old folk, but stand on that table. Yes, sir. Oh, man, what a send off. Get your asses on that table, boys. Come on. Come on, boy. Captain, my captain. 
Yeah, your dumbass is the only one still sitting. I would stand on my table if my computer wasn't on it right now. Mm. Different perspective. You can tell he left a mark on their lives. Mm. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. We all have one of those teachers that we will forever remember. You know, those, te those teachers that gave us so much guidance and a different look on life, you know, something we didn't get at home. That was beautiful, man. That was, ooh, that was so, so good. Robin Williams, man. That was oh so good. That was oh so good. This movie, I love that from the beginning of the film, I had this hint that there's going to be a lot of societal pressures and a lot of like parental pressure on these boys to fit into a role in society, you know, for status and for um, finance, you know, because the boarding school is such a prestigious school. But I peeped this idea of, you know, these boys are, are human and they have like human desires and other like artistic like desires and like ventures they want to get in. And knowing that Robin William is their English teacher, like he's going to play a big part into showing them how to explore that. I, I love that so much. His unorthodox way of teaching, like he felt like, you all know that one good uncle you have, that anytime your uncle come around, like you have a big smile on your face because you know, oh, uncle's coming. That's the kind of uncle I want to be, but you know, that's the kind of person like he was in this movie. Like just that fun uncle that teaches you about poetry and stories and stuff like that. And I love how he motivated them to think differently, you know, but also with caution too. Because when one of them pulled the prank on the assembly with the article, like he cautioned them. He's like, you know, no when to you know go for it and when to be cautious that was very that's a very good lesson it's not just you know balls to the walls be reckless like know when to actually you like hone it in you know like such a good positive like parental figure and I also talked about how some of the parents that were very strict you could understand why they were that strict like that's how they were brought up and you know some of it is becomes a personality trait you know the way your own parents restricted and limited your life and your passions you unfortunately end up doing it to your sons and your daughters like your kids and i mean neil ending up like that i had no idea that this movie was gonna go to that route but um it's very realistic i mean there's some personal matters about something like that that i wanted to share but i'm like i don't want to freaking cry on camera today you know but um it's sad but like that is real that is real. This was a wonderful movie. Uh, thank you all for recommending this movie. I know why it was brought up in the same conversations as Goodwill Hunting. Um, two for two right now with Robin Williams. Like, that man has not let me down. What a beautiful soul. R.I.P. to Robin Williams, man. Um, this was a beautiful film. I will I will have this in my mind uh, for a while. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button if you like the video. It helps the video so much. To my Patreons, thank you so much. Everyone who watched this video, if you had fun, consider subscribing and, you know, join the party over here on this channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Peace.